Hey everybody, it's Tim here coming to you from the Impact Nation studios and today I am joined by a special guest, my new friend Levi the Poet. Welcome Levi. Hello, thank you. It's good to see you, good to have you in here. Uh, Levi and I have been hanging out the last hour or so, uh, just getting to know each other a little bit. Um, But one of the main reasons that I wanted to introduce him to you guys uh, is because he's going to be at the conference, the Beautiful Gospel Conference, coming up in May, May 11th to 14th, right here in Albuquerque. (laughs) I know it's coming up fast. and so I, I wanted you guys to get to know him a little bit, uh, and uh, it's pretty cool, actually, because you're going to be doing some performances at, at the conference. I am. I um, am. So introduce yourself to yeah. the Impact Nations family. What, what you, when you tell people what you do for a living, what yeah. do you say? What's your, what's your vocation? I say <laughs> that I'm a writer and a performance artist. I am a, a spoken word poet um, is probably the most official title, and uh, I've been doing that for the last coming up on 12, 13 years. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, yeah. Um, Can you make a living doing that? Yeah, yeah, I know. It's weird. I mean, people, that's exactly the question every time. Yep. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I so I started in 09. Um, I've always loved writing ever since I was a little kid. Yeah. Uh, journaling, the whole, like, my first record was journals turned into performance pieces. Yeah. Um, it's just the way I process the world and then try to invite other people to process it with me. Yeah. So, Uh, I got started touring with a bunch of bands uh, that all yelled way more than I plan on yelling during this (laughs) conference. Uh, I've learned how to temper things a little bit over the years. Um, But yeah, I've pretty much lived on the road for the last decade or so and uh, toured all over the world now and put out records and have a book and all these things, you know? So that's that's the context. So uh, speaking of book, one one of the connections that we have uh, with you is that we learned that recently you recorded uh, the audiobook version uh, for the latest book of Brian Zond, who's one of the speakers at the Beautiful Gospel Conference. I did, yeah, When Everything's on Fire. Yes. And I, and I, my body and brain was on fire after recording the audio book for him. Yes. <laughs> you yes. and I are both uh, big audio book. I like to say readers. Some yeah. of my friends push back and say, that's not reading. And I uh, say, I, it's, it is absolutely reading. Yeah. Yeah. And I love it. Yeah. I love it. I don't know if that's because we're both too busy and we should actually just be reading. Well, that's. But that's, yeah. I will say I've learned to embrace this part of myself. Yes. I love it, and I don't think that I would get through all of the things that I actually want to Absolutely. get through unless I did I, it this way. Sometimes, for me, it is the best way to get through something yeah. that maybe I don't want to do. Cleaning the garage suddenly becomes that much more palatable when i got a good book to yeah, listen to. Yeah, yeah. I've been running a lot, I, mm. I, and I drive everywhere. I mean, I, yeah. just, I just had 12 hours back from a show in Kansas City, and it's like, <laughs> I want... To read, I want to hear these Absolutely. things. I want to learn. You yeah, know? So. it's a great way to absorb information. And yeah. uh, I, I read fiction and nonfiction yeah. that way. I just yeah. love it. Uh, it. That was a challenge. I'm guessing is to, that was your first time recording an audio book. It was different on the other side of the microphone. It was, <laughs> and I've done a lot of recording in studio, um, but this, I mean, it's a very solitary venture. You know, yeah. like I wanted to record the audio book because when I read. Brian reached out to me for a endorsement Mm. and I read it at the beginning of the year and I just could not, I, I, my endorsement was, this is the book I wish I wrote. I loved it. And I was so grateful Mm. for it. And, uh, so when I, you know, so I reached out, I was like, Hey, can I do the audio book? Thinking all, Oh, this will be great. I'm a recording (laughs) artist. I want to read this book. Uh, it was a harder process to record than I thought it was going to be. It it may have been my first and last audio (laughs) book, but we'll see. We'll see. I don't, I don't regret doing Uh, it. I'm looking forward to checking it out. I have read the, the, uh, I, actually, I didn't read the Dead Tree version. I don't okay. read Dead Tree books; uh-huh. they're too heavy. But I read the ebook, uh, okay. which yeah. is the Dead same. Tree. That's <laughs> yeah. the first time I've yeah. ever heard no, anyone say that. I don't read. I, and I people will chastise me for not bringing a paper Bible to to church or oh, whatever. Yeah. I said, no, I yeah. just I can't read the Dead Tree scrolls. Yeah. I gotta I yeah. gotta have myself. That's good. The, the That's good. Bible. It's That's with good. Me Make them really start to second yeah. guess. <laughs> That's huh? right. The Dead Tree scrolls. <laughs> what am I doing? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Uh, well, I will say that Brian's got, he's a poet himself and he had some mm, poems in there and yeah. that was fun. Cause I enjoy messing with cadence and trying to make it my own. So there were the, in, in the bits where I wasn't just straight up having to like, you know, read and felt like yeah. I could be a bit performative. It was fun. That's that cool. stuff was good. Um, 
in your performance, uh, I asked you this question earlier, and I, I mean, it's a long answer. I appreciate that. But maybe his, uh, in, in a few minutes, uh, <laughs> can you tell us how, and I loved your, your short answer to this was fantastic, how your faith informs your performance, your writing? I'm trying to think of the short answer. <laughs> uh, I think the short answer I gave you earlier was that it can't not. Yeah. Um, you know, sometimes that feels like a blessing and sometimes mm -hmm. that feels like a curse. Yeah. But it's always been a part of who I am. I don't know how to write outside of the context of the worldview that I have and that is constantly evolving yeah. at that. Mm. And, um, you know... So it just, it just is, it's just all, yeah. it's all, I mean, this is my, every, everything is one thing. Yeah. I just think that about every, I just think that. And the more I uh, am alive, the more I see it, the yeah. sort of interconnectedness of it all. So there's no real, uh, I've never been phenomenal at compartmentalizing anything. Yeah. So, uh, it just leaks, yeah. you know, whether I want it to or not. It's interesting. You, when we were talking earlier in, in my office down the hall, you talked about your process and it, it actually very, it sounded very much like the Psalms where you said, you know, I just, I get it out and uh -huh. I begin to write and things. And sometimes I don't even like what I'm communicating or whatever. And I yeah. have to leave it there, Yeah. but it's important part of the process to yes. get it out. Yeah. And it sounded very much like David, as we, as we read some of the Davidic Psalms and he's getting very real with God about mm -hmm. like how he feels about his situation mm -hmm. or how he feels about how God should interact in his mm -hmm. situation. And yet in the end comes back to, but God, yours, your truth is the truth mm -hmm. about this situation. Yeah, that's good. It brings to mind, uh, the truth will set you free, mm. um, yeah. which I learned and might still very well be true, uh, in a very objective way. But I have experienced the freedom that comes from that reality in a far more subjective uh, way. And writing has been a part of that for me. I think that, you know, I, I think that there's something to saying the truth will set you free, even if that doesn't quite end up being the truth. But you still have to get it out of your body. You yeah. still have to get it out of your system. Um things live inside of you in very real biological, physiological ways. And, uh, the expulsion of them just so that you can look at them w without being totally chaotically wrapped up in them, mm. uh, is, it has been a really important part of my process and it doesn't come to me naturally at all. I get, <laughs> I, I mean, it's scary to get things out of you, yeah. you know? And so, uh, but I do think that that's always the invitation that that we 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 can we can be uh, who we are in this place and uh, and for me writing has always been my means of processing that yeah you know it it helps me get down underneath the thing that I think is the thing that isn't you know <laughs> it's I, I mean the thing until the next time you think about the thing yeah yeah I mean I just think that there's a there's a there's a depth that we're invited into that uh, we are eventually forced into. Mm. I th I think I think at some point in time there's like a or maybe it has something to I don't know. I just think that there's a a a invitation into what is beneath all of that chaos that you're not allowed that you think you're not allowed to look at cuz mm -hmm. it's a notion of something. You're allowed to look at it and God's not absent from any of it. Yeah. Hmm. Amen to that. Um if you could just for a moment speak to your listeners, speak to our listeners about why why you're excited about the conference, why are you going? Because I know you you know we invited you to come, and then yeah. you you had to stop and look and and decide whether or not did. this is something for you. I did, um, and I guess you're coming. So yeah, uh, why would you recommend others come? Well, I I I can only speak to my experience of the people who are going to be a part of it and the people putting it on. Um, and there is something of uh, truth and authenticity to it that mm -hmm. resounds in me. Um, I mean, I was initially interested because I, I remain interested because uh, the I've been 
greatly helped by the folks who are going to come and be a part of the main thing, you know? And also I think, uh, I mean, I see the work that you're about, you know, I see the work that I, I, I'm just, I'm, you know, I, you said I had to pause, like I'm trying to be more conscientious about things that I not just like want to, but feel like I can align myself with. Mm. And, um, and not just do something because I feel like I absolutely should or have to, right. you know? And and I think that I think that there is a real kind of a gospel that is an I- invitation to both do that and participate with others in the healing of people's physical worlds and psychological spaces. Yeah. And, uh, and, 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 what I can say from what I know is that some of the folks who are a part of what this thing is going to be have been a part of that journey for me. Yeah. And that, you know, they, I, I'm thankful for people who kind of like help give me permission for the space that I'm in and then yeah. pull me forward. Yeah. And what I've realized over the years, even though I didn't set out to be that kind of person is that in trying to communicate my story well and wrestling with things publicly, uh, which is also another blessing, curse, Mm two-sided coin thing. Um, I have been more and more grateful for folks who give me permission and allow me to give it to myself. Yeah. And I think that this has intonations of that in it. I love what you just said. Uh, Permission to... I don't remember how you phrase it, but but permission, but then pulling you forward as well. So uh-huh. the, the grace to to go through the the struggle, uh-huh. but then to pull you forward into the next thing. Like, yeah, uh-huh. that's good. Now let's go deeper together. Uh-huh. Uh, and I think that uh, these three speakers that we've got coming to this conference are phenomenal at that. Yeah. And you know, uh, you know Brian. Obviously, you mm-hmm. you recently read his book for the audio version, uh, Brian Zond, mm-hmm. uh, and then we've got. Uh, Brad Jerzek, who yeah. uh, I've read said, some of his yeah. stuff, and we follow one another. I, I've yet to meet him in person. <laughs> He's uh, those who are podcast listeners. Impact Nations podcast uh, often has Brad, uh, okay. and he's blessed us many, many times. Okay, uh, but it's funny because you said. Uh, the first time you read, or the first time you read a Brad Jerzak book, you said it made me glad. Uh huh. And I had the opposite reaction, which was the first time I read a Brad Jerzak book, it made me mad because it was so. And I don't even know what I, I don't know if I was mad at him. I don't know if I was mad at me. Mm-hmm. I don't know if I was mad at the institutions that had caused me to think one way, and now I was yeah. second guessing. I don't even know. I can't. Yeah. I, it's you know it's taken that was five years ago, and I'm, yeah. I'm more messed up now, uh-huh. which is good. I'm, uh-huh. I'm I like being messed up. Actually, I'm enjoying the process. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. being messed up. Uh-huh. Uh, and I think that's one of the wonderful things about about these these folks is that they invite you into a place, just kind of mess mess it up, and then let's just sit in that mess for a little yeah. while. And really, m- more than anything, let's just look at the person of Jesus yeah. who invites us into the mess and is with us in the mess and doesn't yeah. leave us there, but there's, is with us there. There's breath there. Mm. Like I, there's... I mean, some people want to say it's all real gray or it could just be real colorful, but there's breath there in that space of, yeah. of becoming. Hmm. Like that's a thing. Becoming is a thing. Yeah. And that's, a, that's not just a... I don't think that that's just like an invitation to all be becoming the exact same uniform thing. I think yeah. that that's a really subjective kind of journey that we're all on and, um, and have a really beautiful helper through it. Yeah. Amen. Um, and then Cherith Nordling, by the way, you haven't had the pleasure yet. Yeah, no, not yet. Yeah. You're going to love Cherith. Uh, she is a remarkable, remarkable woman who, uh, speaks with just such depth, uh, and love it. Oh man, love, that's incredible. Love some depth. She, oh, she's amazing. <laughs> she she will say things, and you, I have wanted to like stop midway through a podcast and just hit re, hit rewind and like, oh, I just need to hear that one more uh-huh. time. You know, uh-huh. uh, she's amazing. So that's good. Yeah, it's gonna be a good time. And cool. I'm excited that you're gonna be there. That's really cool. I'm looking forward to Thanks. to hearing some of your work. Thank um, you. Now, can I put you on the spot? Uh, I know you didn't prepare anything, but uh, if possible, could we uh, 
could we hear just a few minutes of some of Levi the poet today? Just so people can get a little taste of, of what what it might be like to hear you. I your will. Stuff. I can. Yeah, if you want just a few minutes. Uh, for better or worse, my poems are so long winded. Um, <laughs> I have this probably wouldn't be one like that I will do at the actual conference, mm-hmm. but. I think I can remember a full one that would be brief enough right. to warrant uh, sure. sharing. So I, 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 you know, I, I, I write and perform one-off pieces and stuff that are just full stories in and of themselves. But I've also written uh, a couple of things, and one record in particular that's like the whole thing is one narrative. Yeah. So I've got, <laughs> I've got a part of that one narrative yeah. that is you know, supposed to testify to some beauty and things like that. So it can make sense in its sure. own context. It sounds but like a concept album. The, it's the, a concept from the album. 70s, so like, like another brick in the wall or whatever. It is. Yeah. I would love, I will gladly <laughs> receive that. Uh, yes, I'll, I'll mm. receive It's You know what? It's exactly like another brick in the wall. <laughs> Perfect. All right, we have the newest Pink Floyd right here in the studio. Uh, hey, That's thanks it. so much for being with us. We'll we'll reset the camera so you can you can stand there and, and, yeah. and look right into the camera. But I'm, right. I'm so thankful to have had time with you today. Yeah, this has been you. marvelous. Uh, hey, if our listeners are interested, uh, please, you should be interested. Come, hang out with us. We're yeah. going to have a great time. Uh, and I think, honestly, I think your life will never be the same. Beautifulgospelconference.com is where you can go to learn more. Beautifulgospelconference.com. It is uh, May 11th to 14th, uh, right here in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Uh, if you're coming from out of town, we've got uh, reduced rates at a hotel right near the facility. Uh, and uh, we're going Wednesday night, Thursday morning, Thursday afternoon, we've got some amazing breakout sessions. Thursday mm-hmm. night, Friday morning, Friday afternoon, we're all taking a trip up to Santa Fe just to have some oh, yeah? fun together. You're going to meow wolf it? We're get, well, <laughs> I don't know if we'll go that right. I don't want to freak people out. I, <laughs> that place freaked me right out. Uh, oh, man. <laughs> all right, uh, I'll lead the meow. Yeah, I, right, I figured out my right, actual lead, reason yeah, for being a part of this conference. He's coming to lead the meow wolf I tour. I will be leading the meow wolf tour. Uh, <laughs> uh, and then Friday night uh, and Saturday morning, we're going right to, right to noon. We're going to be having meals together and stuff. It's going to be an amazing time. So if you want to learn more, beautifulgospelconference.com. Uh, register today. We would love to see you there. Uh, and I think you'll really be blessed by Levi the Poet as well. We'll find out. <laughs> Thanks, Levi. Thanks. All right. Here's Levi's uh, one-off piece. <laughs> My love, when we first set sail and pushed off to sea, I stood at the bow looking backward, dry-eyed and imagining that the world in all of its color and grandeur and majesty had been devastated by that same flood I'd seen when I told you that my father was making me leave. It was a midsummer night's eve. And in my heart, it was a romance. That same Shakespearean tragedy. That quintessential teenage flickering that let love burn brighter in the reminiscent memories before we slowly fell asleep. Cuddling beneath the stars that I wished upon through the cutout at the top of the teepee. It doubled by day as an Indian fort. With girls have cooties stitched across the seams, and at night, our secret love affair that the cowboys would have deemed a crime punishable by cap gun, and sour faces, and wild, wild west make-believe. Old enough to comprehend, but young enough to dream. I can still hear the rhythm of your breathing beneath that canopy while the wind played brush on the snare and God threw his bolt of lightning like the thunder clapped clave to compliment the whistling moving through the trees and remembered you promising that when we grew up, you'd build a home for me. So now to start growing... And you'd curl up your fake mustache like your favorite character in your favorite movie and whisper, I'll be your huckleberry. And in the morning, when I snuck back to my room, I thought tragedy indeed, that innocence, if ever it was, can be stripped away without a warning, my king. By grace, or by fate, or by luck, or by mercy, I trust the moon will carry your letters safely to me. 
This flood rescinding will give way to land depending, and like the hand of God gave olive leaves to encourage that ancient family. My dove, with love and sincerity and all that I have to offer, your queen.